Welcome to the show. Thank you. And welcome to the 2020 race. How Thank does it you. feel to be in? It feels inspiring. Yeah. Uh, uh, inspiring because I'm, I'm finding people who really want to see a president who believes in science. Right. Who believes that the number one job of the United States is to defeat climate change. Yes. And people are telling me that that's the right message. I marched with thousands of kids in New York the other day who understand that, who believe this is a moral obligation. And who understand that, uh, look, this is the first generation to feel the sting of climate change, and we're the last generation that can do something about it. It's interesting, though, you are one of what I would like to call the OGs of climate change, <laughs> right? <laughs> no, long before it was popular amongst most, uh, you know, candidates, most, most politicians, yeah. you were on the front lines fighting for climate change. In fact, you've made that your number one policy position, which is people always say is risky. They go, don't go with one policy position. Yeah. Why would you risk it all on climate change? Because you can't solve other problems unless you solve climate change. And I've believed this for a long time. I co-authored a book about it 11 years ago. I've started the U.S. Climate Alliance. Look, if you'd been at Paradise, California with me a few months ago and you saw a town with 25,000 people rendered burnt right down to the foundations and nobody there, it, it looked like a, a Hollywood apocalypse movie. And that is a foretaste to what we're looking at. So what we know is this is a matter of urgent peril but it is also a matter of great promise, great economic promise. So we need someone who will really rally the American people, and I have tremendous faith in Americans' ability to innovate. Mm -hmm. you know, this is what we do. We invent, we create, we build. We just need that spark of inspiration from the White House, like Kennedy gave us when I was a little bit younger. And I can tell you, I'm pledging you tonight, if I'm President of the United States, I'm gonna make defeating climate change the number one job of the United States of America. That's what I'm gonna do. Let me, let me ask you this, though. You have, you have now 15, 16 candidates in the race, and all of them has, have said climate change is part of their policy. I, I mean, how do you then differentiate yourself from them if everybody is biting your style? Well, number one, they all make potential good vice presidents. Uh -huh. so I would consider <laughs> that. I think that uh, my candidacy is unique in a number of ways. Number one, I'm the only candidate who said forcefully that this has to be the, the first, foremost, and paramount duty of the United States. Mm -hmm. And the reason I think it's important to say that is that if it is not job one, it won't get done. And the reason is, is we have to use our political capital. We have to develop a, a national mandate to actually do this. Look, this is heavy lifting. We have to reorient and mobilize the entire uh, government around this mission statement. Right. So having been the only candidate to really recognize that, and I've been a governor, I understand, unlike some others, to govern is to choose. And yes. I have chosen that as the priority because it is the existential threat. And we can't solve our other problems unless we solve that. That's number one. Number two, look, I've been at this for 20 years. I campaigned in 92 on this issue. I co-authored a book on this. I started the Apollo Project legislation back in, I don't know, the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. So this is something that I've been both passionate and effective about. And, and the third thing is the governor, we're moving the needle in Washington state. Look, we're building a huge uh, uh, wind turbine industry. It's mm -hmm. $6 billion industry. We now have legislation here that I hope we're going to uh, guarantee Washingtonians 100% clean electrical grid. Right. Uh, we're doing the things in Washington. So both by passion, commitment, prioritization, and experience, I think that's what we need. And I think it'd be great to have someone who believes in science and gravity in the White House. I think that would be great. Let's, uh... <laughs> let's, talk, let's talk about your state a little bit. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about Washington State. Let's talk about what you're doing out there. The wind turbines is a beautiful initiative, mm -hmm. but one of your friends, actually, and, and one of the people who has supported you in the past, Bill Gates, mm -hmm. has come out and said, you know, through research, they've realized that wind energy, solar energy is mm -hmm. not going to be enough to mm -hmm. propel us out of mm -hmm. the danger of climate change. Yeah. Right? So surely there needs to be a jump bigger than what we're dealing with right now. And so some will argue that we cannot just jump to wind and solar and abandon fossil fuels if we don't have an interim right. solution. Is that your number one priority, or do you genuinely believe in just wind and solar? I genuinely believe that we're going to need multiple technologies and we're going to need multiple industries. We're going to need Americans building electric cars in Michigan. We're going to need Americans building lithium-ion batteries for electric cars in Nevada. Mm -hmm. We're going to need Americans putting up wind turbines in Iowa. We're going to need multiple technologies. But I do believe we have to have a much more robust research and, and development program because we are going to need some additional technologies. Right. And I've, and listen, this is the difference between me and Donald Trump. He is a pessimistic, uh, fearful, insecure person. I am a confident, optimistic person who believes that America, who put a man in the moon, 
who defeated fascism sure as heck can build a clean energy economy. That's who we are as Americans, and I fundamentally believe that. The, um, <laughs> the state that you're in, the state that you're in, the state that you are governing has in many ways helped shape the future that we now mm -hmm. live in today. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, some of the companies that you, you govern over have been criticized. You know, Elizabeth Warren came out saying the tech companies have gotten too big mm -hmm. and they need to be broken up. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with this? Well, what I agree with is that, uh, look, a lot of these tech companies have made our lives so much better in so many ways. But I do believe we need to rein in uh, a considerable number of corporate practices. Uh, that's why I'm proud that I was the first governor to sign a bill guaranteeing net neutrality. We net, need net neutrality and we mm -hmm. need it nationally. We've done that in our state. Uh, I believe that we need a, a, a way to stop the incredible subsidies that the fossil fuel industry is getting. Right. Send their lobbyists to D.C. and come back with billions of dollars that we have. I believe that we need to rein in the abuses of our privacy. And I'm looking forward to, there's a bill I'm advancing through our legislature that I hope will be the template for privacy protection in the United States. Right. And I also believe we have to find a way to stop these corporations from blackmailing communities to saying, we're gonna move our 20,000 jobs out of your town right. unless, you you give us, unless you give us a tax treatment. So yes, we need to bring some sanity to our, uh, to our society and to our economy. And I'm, I'm up to that. Come to Washington, I'll show you uh, good policies. Now, some, some might say this, though. They, they might say, okay, Governor Inslee, you say that you're going to fight against these companies who, mm -hmm. who have blackmailed states with their right. tax policies, but you gave Boeing, I think it was an $8 billion mm -hmm. tax credit, right? Mm -hmm. And Boeing has also come under criticism recently where people have said, do they have too much power? It looks right. like they investigate themselves, they govern themselves, the FAA is toothless. Mm -hmm. What do you think needs to be done in that regard? And at the second, the follow-up to that question would be, why did you give them a tax break and why do you think some companies should receive a tax break, if they should at all? Well, they shouldn't. And the fact it is, it, look, if you've ever been mugged, you understand what it feels like. Yes, I have. Okay, you have. <laughs> You're not happy about that, right? Not at all. Well, I was not happy about the Boeing situation because what happens, these corporations put a gun to your ribs and say, you're going to lose 20,000 jobs unless you get a tax break. That is why I'm so adamant to try to stop that kind of behavior. We should use the tax code so taxpayers aren't victimized like so that. So you, you propose stopping it everywhere Indeed. so that people can't Indeed. blackmail one state using another state's tax breaks. No local community should be blackmailed by any corporation in right. America. We'd have be dedicated to that. Uh, now listen, on this FAA issue, serious issue. Here's one thing I know about that situation. We have an administration that you can't trust for anything. They are repealing our environmental laws through the EPA. Right. They are pillaging our public life uh, lands through the Secretary of Interior's mm -hmm. action. They are reducing uh, our research and development of clean energy in the Department uh, of Energy and that kind of work. And, and everything they've touched has been chaotic and, in, and ineffective. I mean, they really can't run a two-car funeral uh, when it comes right down to it. Right. So what I know is we need someone who has been a successful executive who has helped build the number one economy in the United States, which is the state of Washington, who has stood up against Donald Trump's Muslim ban, who has done the, uh, America's best family leave policy and one of the biggest minimum wage increases yes. and net neutrality and transportation infrastructure. They can't build a birdhouse in Washington, D.C. We've got uh, billions of dollars of transportation. That kind of executive can lead this country, and uh, I hope I have that honor. You make a compelling case. Thank you so much for being on the show. Governor Jay Inslee, everybody.